Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in the Pledge of the Christian Flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Please join me in the Pledge to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide his words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Welcome. On behalf of the school board, the administration, the teachers and staff at Cornerstone Christian Academy, we welcome you to the graduation ceremony for the 2023 uh, Cornerstone Christian Academy seniors. Uh, if you have a cell phone, if you would, please silence it uh, so that it doesn't go off during the ceremony. And if you would bow your head, we'll pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every single one of these students and their families. We're mindful, Lord, that there were great sacrifices that were made during the time that they've been here. Parents, families, schedules, some days good, some days not good, but all of it, Lord, has become this wonderful day in which we give glory to you for this opportunity for these young men and women to take the next step in their lives and their journey and may your richest blessing be upon them and their families in this school. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. like to read from the book of Hebrews 12, verse 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders this and sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This verse reminds us that we are not alone in this journey of faith. We have a great multitude of witnesses in those who have gone before us, upon whose shoulders we stand. The point is that Christ can be trusted. We can have a thriving faith in him, regardless of what we have been through or who we will face in the future. Now I'll read the class scripture. This is in Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The graduation honor cord is a symbol to distinguish the individual for their academic achievements. Honor cords are awarded based on cumulative grade point average achieved throughout all coursework during the student's four years in high school. The red cord signifies those students who achieved between a 3.0 and 3.49 GPA. The silver cord signifies those students who achieved between a 3.5 and 3.79 GPA. The gold cord signifies those students who achieved a GPA of 3.8 and above. 
At Cornerstone Christian Academy, we also recognize service with the Blue Service Cord. Blue Service Cords are earned by completing at least 80 hours of service performed by a student at school, church, and in the community over, their, over the course of their four years in high school. Please stand and join us for worship. Stop working. 
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 You are waymaker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 That is who you Good afternoon, family, friends, faculty, board, and fellow graduates. I would like to begin by thanking each and every one of you for the support you have given us throughout the years. Without you, many of us would not be where we are today. Uh, without your guidance, direction, and discipline, we would not be the people we are today. To, to the parents, thank you. Thank you for all you have done and continue to do for us. We often take things for granted and overlook the sacrifices you make. The advice and guidance you bestowed upon us has not gone unnoticed. Wisdom and growth come from the words we may not want to hear, but we need to hear. From personal experience, my mother sugarcoats nothing. <laughs> if I ask her how I did, she will tell me exactly how I did and make sure to point out everything that I can do better. I don't want to listen to her critiques, but once I fix them and see the outcome, I realize, okay, maybe she was right. Now, will I say this to her? Probably not. I can't let her ego get too big. <laughs> Thank you to the faculty for tolerating us throughout the years. I know that sometimes we were a bit much to deal with, but we still have memory, many memories with each of our teachers. Like, like Mr. Snook, he always gave a special story for us. Um, Mrs. Verdrome discovering that we didn't do our homework. Mrs. Prochaska having to listen to our playful arguments that sometimes take an aggressive turn. Mrs. Watson telling us that we need new friends. <laughs> Mrs. Lake teaching us to swing dance in the middle of senior thesis. Mrs. Ortiz, daily dose of winking and calling us kiddos will definitely be missed. 
Mr. Roberts' poker face will always be remembered. <laughs> and our daily raise of Mrs. Thy office will always be one of the highlights of the year. To my fellow classmates, we finally made it. We are here. We did it. I remember walking in the halls in seventh grade and seeing the seniors and thinking, one day, that will be me. That day has come, and now I am here giving my class address on the last day we will, we will probably be together. Um, it's crazy to think where we came from to where we are now. We went from little seventh graders hitting people with sticks to young adults preparing to start the next chapter of our, next chapter of our lives. We have grown so much during our time at Cornerstone and overcame many obstacles. Together, we survived a, glo a global pandemic and Mrs. Jeanette's online science class. <laughs> we have gained friendships, experiences, wisdom, and this year, I even gained the twins. I still don't understand why people are surprised. We created core memories like Mrs. Prochaska's study halls, which speak for itself. A special shout out to my friends. Without y'all, I would have given up a long time ago. You guys pushed me to be the better version of myself. Now life will take us down different paths. I pray that we are able to apply the things we learned during our time at Cornerstone and never forget the many experiences we share. We may need to forget some of the experiences. <laughs> wherever life leads you, always remember, the will of God will never take you where the grace of God cannot protect you. You are in control of your future. You are the CEO of, you, of your dreams. With prayer and faith, all things are possible. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power, but no prayer, no power. <clears throat> In closing, I wish to leave you with a verse of hope. <clears throat> Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Class of 2023, there is a plan for your life, and we are destined to be great. Congratulations. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I would like to thank all of the teachers, friends, family, and parents that are here today to celebrate with us on this achievement. Each and every one of you are here today have impacted our lives in various ways through prayer, supporting us, showing up, and believing in us. To the teachers, whether you had us in class, went on a trip with us, or simply passed us in the hallway, you have no idea the impact you've had on our lives. Each day, you inspire us with your knowledge, kindness, encouragement. You have pushed us to be better than we ever thought we could be. You challenged us to believe in ourselves. Each of you have taught us important lessons, like Mrs. Watson, who taught us the essentials, Edgar Allan Poe, and not to paint our faces with icing if we don't want to have an allergic reaction. <laughs> Mr. Cook taught us that geometry is only relevant if we are traveling to Topeka, Kansas. Mrs. Berjo motivated us through our AP Calculus exam with pancakes. Mrs. Glantz, even though she abandoned us in our last year, never failed to make us laugh, and her door was always open and always happened to be unlocked so that we could walk into her classroom at any point. Mr. Snook taught us every historical fact known to man. Mrs. Prochaska taught us not to trust the feds, and she helped me experience failure, even though it was only so she could see me cry. Mr. Roberts made sure, we made sure we knew we had to laugh at all his jokes, because in sixth grade, we were way too scared of him not to laugh. <laughs> Mrs. Ortiz always had an open door and has made many hard decisions throughout the years that allowed us to have the best experience possible, especially through the COVID years. Mrs. D'Amico was brave enough to take our senior class to Virginia to swim in mud and play with bugs. She also helped many of us realize that we are definitely okay with not becoming marine biologists. 
And Miss Dye's closet-sized office continued to hold all 33 of us in between third and fourth period. Miss Dye also taught us not only who and where to serve, but she taught us how to serve. Each of us took away a different life lesson from each and every teacher and faculty member. We are so grateful to each of you for letting us interrupt your planning periods, for giving us extra help on assignments we didn't understand, and for letting us enjoy our high school experience. We simply could not have made it through without you. To the parents, each and every one of you here have made a sacrifice in some way to send us to Cornerstone. You have believed in us and supported our journeys throughout the last 13 years of our lives. Because of you, Cornerstone has become our second home, our roots. Colossians 2.7 says, let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will go strong in the truth that you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Because of your support, we have learned, we have studied, and now we have to use that knowledge to make our own choices. Being one of the four OG kindergartners left, <laughs> I have had the privilege of watching each and every one of my classmates walk into Cornerstone for the very first time. We have grown up together. We've experienced deaths. We've experienced a pandemic. We've been on many trips and retreats. We've learned about each other. We've learned about our teachers. And most importantly, we've learned about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, after today, we aren't living in the choices of our parents. We aren't living in the faith of our teachers. We are about to go out into this world as individuals without each other. We don't have a step-by-step -step guidebook on what to do next. We luckily do have the word of God as a reference, but we now have to willingly make our own decisions and deal with the consequences or enjoy the benefits. We are going to fail and hopefully we will learn how to succeed. We are going to have doors open and we are going to have doors closed. Walt Disney once said, it is kind of fun to do the impossible. The impossible is exactly what we are doing. We are going out into the world that is going to hate us. And we get the privilege of showing the world the love we have received here. We have experienced the power of the Holy Spirit working through our teachers, our families, and our classmates. We haven't seen the worst yet, and hopefully we haven't seen the best. After today, we are walking away from the beginning of our lives. These are the people that have shaped us into who we are. These are the people that have supported us at our worst and believed in us at our best. However, we are taking the next step into the rest of our lives. We are here today because of you, because you believed in us. And now we have to let go of the hands we've been holding on to for our entire lives. We are unsteady, we are confident, we are nervous, and we are excited. On behalf of the entire senior class, thank you. Thank you for never letting go. Thank you for picking us up when we fell down. And thank you for allowing us to walk beside you and find our own way. Can't hold what a heart is feeling I 
is where the chapter ends A new one now begins the Time has come for letting go The hardest part is when you know All of these years When we were here Are ending But I'll always remember We have had the time of our lives And now the pages turn stories we will write we have had the time of our lives and i will not forget the faces left behind it's hard to walk If it has to end, I'm glad you have been my friend in the time of our lives. Where the water meets the land, there is shifting in the sand, like the tide that ebbs and flows. Memories will come and go. Faces left behind, it's hard to walk away from the best of days. But if it has to end, I'm glad you have been my friend in the time of our lives. I'm glad you have been my friend. In the time of our lives.
I am honored to be the valedictorian of CCA's class of 2023. Um, yeah. <laughs> CCA boldly exists to help form Christ-like students who will impact their world for the glory of God. Each of the administrators, faculty, staff, and coaches that I have interacted with over my time at CCA have embodied those principles. And for that, we all say thank you. Thank you for devoting your careers to helping others. Thank you for working long hours to care for our needs and for sacrificing in various ways. Thank you for demonstrating Christ-like character in all that you do and for modeling that character for all of us. I do have a few people that I would like to thank specifically. Thank you to Mrs. Ortiz for guiding me and my class throughout our senior year especially and for being an excellent teacher. Thank you to Ms. Dye for inspiring me to be a better person and for driving all of us so many miles over the years to countless sporting events and on school trips. Thank you to Mrs. Prochaska for being so nice and for making every class interesting. Thank you to Mr. Snook for helping us learn about the importance of history and for helping me develop my love for history. Thank you to my, thank you to my track and field coaches, Coach Stan and Coach Crystal, for bringing a shot and a disc to a track practice one muddy day at Squires Castle and for encouraging all of us to never stop trying to get better. Thank you to my grandparents for everything you have done for me and thank you to my parents for supporting everything I've done over the years and for being there for me all the time. My charge to the class of 2023 is quite simple. Run your own race. Galatians 6.4 says, Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone, without comparing themselves to someone else. I first came to Cornerstone for the 2018-2019 school year. I was supposed to be a 7th grader, but I was able to skip a year and join my cousin Aiden in the 8th grade. During my time at Cornerstone, I played various sports, including soccer, track and field, and cross country. While I wasn't particularly good at any of those sports, I, enjoy, I enjoyed the time I got to spend with all my friends every day after school. Thank you to my classmates for welcoming, welcoming me into this class and how, sorry, our class grew closer year after year and we enjoyed many trips together, including our trip to Washington, D.C., our trip to Kentucky and Cincinnati, our junior retreat, our trip to Virginia Beach, and our missions trip. I might, have good, I might have good grades, but there are many things I can't do. I can't dunk a basketball like DJ or Deshaun. I can't play soccer as well as Elliot or Troy. I can't play football as good as Ryan. I can't play baseball as well as TJ or Aiden. 
I don't have perfect handwriting like Tino or Andrew. I'm not as good of a note taker as Gabby or Renee. And if I compared myself to my classmates on those issues, I would feel like a failure. But God gave us all different talents. In 11th grade, my friend James invited me to join the track team. As it turns out, I'm not so great at running. I'm also, <laughs> I'm also not particularly fast, so I decided to try throwing instead. In every meet in 11th grade, my goal was simple. Don't ever finish last. And I never did. I worked hard at throwing shot put and discus, and I want to thank David Casey and John Paul for setting the bar high on CCA's shot and discus records. This year I set my goal to break their records, and many hours of hard work paid off. Don't be afraid to try new things. Work hard at everything you do. Do your best no matter what your skill set is or what you're doing. Don't value yourself based on someone that is better than you at something. God made each of us who we are and gave us the talents that we need to be successful on the path that he has for us. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God made all of us to be different and gave us all different skills, talents, and abilities. What we do with all of our unique skills and talents is what matters. As we graduate today and go down our separate paths, run your own race and look to God for strength when you start to feel weary. If we each use our special skills and abilities to follow the path God has for each of us, we will absolutely impact our world for the glory of God. Thank you. It is now our privilege to present the graduation diplomas. Parents, as your student's name is called, please stand to be recognized with your student. Renee Yvonne Ashworth. <laughs> Renee is the daughter of Bryant and Dina Ashworth. Renee will attend Lakeland Community College majoring in medical sciences. Her future plans include achieving an associate degree in science, pursuing sonography, and becoming an ultrasound technician. Gabrielle Angelina Belleville. <laughs> Gabrielle is the daughter of Aaron and Deborah Belleville. Gabrielle will enter YWAM's Discipleship Training School in January, and she will be raising funds and working all summer to achieve this. Her future plans include following God's calling for her as a full-time missionary. She would like to serve in South America in the countries of Guatemala and Argentina. She also hopes to not only minister on the mission field, but also in her home as a future wife and mother. <laughs> Hermela Tirhas Jewel Bennett. Hermela is the daughter of Richard and Julie Bennett. Hermela is the recipient of the CCA Christian Character Award and is a National Honor Society member. Hermela will spend the upcoming year preparing for a future career through work experience and further education. Antonio Micah Braddock. Antonio is the son of Tracy Braddock and Tim Braddock. Antonio will attend the University of Akron's Williams Honors College majoring in software engineering. Antonio is the recipient of the Presidential Scholarship from Akron University and the Williams Honors College Scholarship from Akron University. His future plans include traveling and studying abroad with his first destination being Italy. <laughs> Cole Anthony D'Amico. Cole is the son of Tammy and the late Anthony T. D'Amico. Cole will be attending Malone University in the fall, where he will pursue a major in youth ministry and a creative writing minor. Cole is a recipient of an eSports scholarship from Malone University, as well as the 2023 scholarship recipient from Munson Township. 
His future plans are to see where God will take his life and ministry. Other plans include writing stories and traveling, especially to Japan. He also would like to one day own a sailboat. <laughs> Elliot Nock Dang. <laughs> Elliot is the son of Huang and Libby Dang. Elliot will attend Cleveland State University majoring in mechanical engineering. Elliot serves as the National Honor Society president and is the recipient of the Provost Scholarship at Cleveland State University. He is the recipient of a CCA Christian Character Award. He also hopes to achieve his Eagle Scout rank this summer. His future plans include learning to not fall asleep in class, to hopefully keep playing soccer, and to pursue his passion in photography and videography. <laughs> Mitchell Anderson Dodd. <laughs> Mitchell is the son of Stephen and Heather Dodd. Mitchell will attend Ohio State University School of Health and Rehabilitation Services, majoring in pre-med. Mitchell is the valedictorian for the class of 2023. He is the recipient of the Willoughby Hills Lions Club Scholarship and Trustees Scholarship by Ohio State. In addition, he was admitted to the Advocates for Communities and Education Scholar Program. His future plans include studying abroad during college, going to medical school, and becoming a doctor. Shania Lachey Dungey. <laughs> Shania is the daughter of Jeremy Dungey and Shakia Brewer. Shania will attend North Carolina Central University, majoring in business management and law. Shania served as the senior class president and is the recipient of the Zeta Phi Beta Scholarship. Her future plans include owning a law firm and having her own reality show called Tell it how it is. <laughs> Aiden Charles Hackney. Aiden is the son of David and Amy Hackney. Aiden will attend the Ohio State University Agricultural Technical Institute, majoring in turf grass management. Aiden is the recipient of the Northern Ohio Golf Association Scholarship, the OSU ATI Scholarship, the Ohio State ATI Turf Club Scholarship, the Michael F. McFrederick Memorial Scholarship, and the Chick-fil-A Leadership Scholarship. <laughs> His future plans include working for Sandridge Golf Club this summer and is hoping to pursue an internship with the Pittsburgh Pirates next summer. His ultimate goal upon graduation from ATI is to pursue a career managing and maintaining the grounds for either a professional sporting organization or a golf course. He is looking forward to continuing to serve within his local church in worship. <laughs> Mia Faith Hansen. Mia is the daughter of Richard and Sherry Hansen and James and Diane D'Amico. Mia will attend Bowling Green State University, majoring in biology and pre-med. Mia served as National Technical Honor Society Vice President via Auburn Career Center. She is the recipient of the Bowling Green State Un University Academic Scholarship and obtained an Auburn Career Center Emergency Medical Services Certificate. Her future plans include obtaining her National Registry Certification and state license to practice as an emergency medical technician in the state of Ohio. She also plans on going to medical school and continuing to help people. <laughs> Jeremiah Hendricks. <laughs> Jeremiah is the son of Tiana Hendricks. Jeremiah will attend Central State University, majoring in business. His future plans include graduating college and starting his own business. Marche Hill.
Marche is the daughter of Michael and Dejan Woolard. Marche will attend Kent State University majoring in biology. Marche is the recipient of the Academic Achievement Award, Flash Access Grant, and Choose Ohio First Scholarship. Her future plans include attending medical school studying dermatology, opening a, a private practice to serve the black and brown communities with exceptional skincare practices, traveling, and eventually starting a family. <laughs> Anaya Iman Johnson. Iman is the daughter of Monroe and Tamiko Johnson. Iman will attend John Carroll University majoring in young adult education. Iman is the recipient of the Presidential Scholarship and JCU Northeast Ohio Scholarship. Her future plans include teaching middle and high school, studying psychology to become a therapist, traveling around the world as a teacher, and continuing to study Spanish. <laughs> Radon T.J. Jones III. <laughs> T.J. is the son of Radon Jr. and Abigail Jones. <laughs> T.J. will attend Lorraine Community College majoring in business. T.J. was this year's student body president and is the recipient of a Lorraine Community College baseball scholarship. His future plans include transferring to a four-year university, continuing to play baseball, own his own business, and coach football at the high school level. <laughs> Kirsten Ann Keeper. <laughs> Kirsten is the daughter of Kevin and Christina Keeper. Kirsten will attend Mount Vernon Nazarene University majoring in pre-dentistry. Kirsten is the recipient of the MVNU cheer competition team and basketball sideline team athletic scholarship. She is a member of the student council and the National Honor Society. Her future plans include continuing on to dental school after MVNU to become a dentist. <laughs> Samuel King. Sam is the son of Anthony and Victoria King. Sam will attend Lakeland Community College, majoring in political science. Sam earned a NIM certificate for CNC operations with the SolidWorks certificate and milling operator certificate. His future plans include getting a CAD and work study job while in college, attend law school, and take the bar exam to become a lawyer, and then pursue pastorship. He plans to get married during college and start a family after law school. He is prayerful that God has given him this path, and he wants to work his hardest to accomplish these goals and honor God. <laughs> Christian Tyler Mason. <laughs> Christian is the son of Ayanna White and Ace Mason. Christian will attend Kent State, majoring in business. His future plans include growing stronger in his faith and having a healthy, wealthy, and God-loving family of his own. <laughs> Joseph Neal Maynard. <laughs> Joseph is the son of Jason and Michelle Maynard. Joseph intends to go to trade school in the fall for welding and pursue a career at Ohio Ordnance Works. His future plans include continuing as the lead assembly technician for Cleveland Software Design, where he excels in the building and soldering of circuit boards and components. He will also continue to manage the order shipping process and training the other technicians. Liam Adler Meredith. <laughs> Liam is the son of Robert and Dina Meredith. 
Liam will attend Lakeland Community College, majoring in welding. His future plans include a successful career and eventually marrying his high school sweetheart. <laughs> Ryan Joseph Merrill. Ryan is the son of Almeida Merrill and Gary Merrill. Ryan will attend Lake Erie College, majoring in sports management. Ryan served as student body vice president and is the recipient of a Lake Erie College athletic football scholarship. His future plans include getting his degree, getting married, living in a nice house, traveling the world, and having at least two kids. Daryl Eugene Niles, Jr. <laughs> DJ is the son of Wanda Niles and Daryl Franklin. DJ will attend Hiram College, majoring in sports management. DJ served as NHS Vice President and is the recipient of a Hiram College Basketball Athletic Scholarship. His, his future plans include playing college basketball, living a successful life spiritually and financially, and finally getting his driver's license. <laughs> Matthew Christian Prochaska. <laughs> Matt is the son of Kristen and the late John Prochaska. Matt will start an apprenticeship at Faith Tool and Manufacturing. His future plans include staying and growing in the word, coaching CCA soccer, and raising a family of his own. Savannah Nicole Reed. Savannah is the daughter of Michelle and Mac Konjevic. Savannah will attend Lake Erie College, majoring in equestrian studies. Her future plans include moving to Florida and hopefully visiting the World Equestrian Center in Ocala, Florida. She will continue to ride her horse, Chaka, and hopefully train other horses. She also hopes to travel around the world and have fun-filled adventures. Teresa Elizabeth Santilli. <laughs> Teresa is the daughter of Sam and Suzanne Santilli. Teresa will attend Palm Beach Atlantic in West Palm Beach, Florida, majoring in biology with a concentration of marine biology and minor in oceanography. Teresa is the recipient of the Palm Beach Atlantic Academic Presidential Scholarship Award and is Mr. Roberts' favorite student because he said when she, he would shed half a tear for her when she graduates. <laughs> that is up for debate. <laughs> her future plans include finding a job in marine conservation, studying abroad, uh, studying abroad through semester at sea in her latter college years, and traveling the world while helping the ecosystem and oceans. Troy Michael Scott. <laughs> Troy is the grandson of Jim and Vicki Yinches. Troy will take a gap year to serve in the missions field with YWAM. After completing a year of service in the mission field, he will attend Lakeland Community College. Troy is the recipient of the Gloria J. Belvey Scholarship Program for the United States Postal Service. His future plans include completing his studies at Lakeland Community College and playing two years of soccer and taking welding classes. He also plans on participating in any missions or church work God calls him to. <laughs> Kaylee Madison Smith. Kaylee is the daughter of Christine and Nathan Schwarzlander. Kaylee will attend Hilbert College, majoring in criminal justice. Kaylee is a member of Student Council and the National Honor Society. 
Her future plans include going into crime scene investigating and playing volleyball at Hilbert. Adam Sapinski, Jr. Adam is the son of Adam Sr. and Melinda Sapinski. Adam will take a gap year to serve in the missions field with YWAM. After completing a year of service in the missions field, Adam will attend university in Sweden, majoring in international business. He also wants to travel the world and have four kids. Andrew John Susick. <laughs> Andrew is the son of John and Nancy Susick. Andrew will attend Cedarville University, majoring in mechanical engineering. Andrew is receiving an academic scholarship from Cedarville University and is a member of the National Honor Society. While pursuing his industry credential seal, he was certified as a SolidWorks Mechanical Design Associate, CNC Haas Basic Mill Operator, and NIMS CNC Mill Operations. He is also a second degree black belt in Kaju Kenpo, and is one of, if not the best dancer in CCA history. <laughs> Moonwalking with uneasy approval from commencement committee. His future plans include moving to a warmer climate and eventually designing his own home. Aurora Page Tedrick. Rory is the daughter of Ryan and Peggy Tedrick. Rory will attend the University of Toledo, majoring in nursing. Rory is the recipient of the Toledo Ex Excellence Scholarship, the Rocket Day Nursing Scholarship, and the CCA Service Scholarship. She is the 2023 Salutatorian, Class Vice President, and a National Honor Society member. Her future plans include getting her BSN and then hopefully getting her DNP. Deshaun Vaden. Deshaun is the son of Crystal Turner and Demetrius Vaden Slaughter. Deshaun will attend Mount Union University, majoring in marketing and media production. His future plans include impacting the world of sports through marketing and media production, capturing life's beautiful moments through photography, acknowledging the call of God in his life, and walking in the plans that God has for him to prosper him and to keep him an ex keep sorry and to give him an expected and and according to Jeremiah 29:11 My love Desiree Jamari Walker Lovey is the daughter of Alfred and Joy Buck Lovey will attend Cleveland State University majoring in sports medicine and exercise science Lovey is the recipient of a CSU Merit Award. Her future plans include earning her degree in exercise science and athletic training, traveling and exploring different places, and eventually getting her own house and getting married, of course. <laughs> Noah Walter. Noah is the son of Eric and Melissa Walter. Noah will attend Mercyhurst University, majoring in engineering and cybersecurity. Noah is the recipient of a Mercyhurst University academic scholarship. His future plans include making headway in the engineering field and going to further establish Waltech Industries as a worthy technology company where the company motto is making sure future's problems are yesterday's projects. Holly Elizabeth Westbecker. <laughs> 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 
Holly is the daughter of Jennifer Westbecker. Holly will attend Cleveland State University majoring in health sciences. Holly is a member of the NHS and serves as student body secretary treasurer. Her future plans include giving medical care to the underprivileged in developing countries and eventually taking part in an archeological dig and traveling to Italy and Greece with her mom. You know what I was thinking? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was thinking about all those times we started a little bit late. And since I'm the end, I can kind of reclaim some time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, there they got it. They learned something. Okay. <laughs> well, you, you've seen and heard so many wonderful things this, this afternoon. And I'll tell you, it's, it's such a blessing for me to be here to close this out, but I do have a few things I'd like to just add on to what we've heard, and I promise that any history lesson will be short. But we, we have heard many wonderful goals and dreams and career pursuits. All are very noble, and you know you'll all be challenged in so many ways to fulfill them. You really will. That's very important to recognize going in, that uh, as it was mentioned on Senior Recognition Night, if it's, if it's easy, then you're not doing it right. I've seen you guys grow from 10th graders to seniors. Besides driving each other crazy and driving me crazy from time to time, I've also, over the last three years, seen that you have been a, a really cool class that worked together on a number of different levels. Over, over three years of being a teacher with having them as seniors twice in their last year, an incredible honor. I mean, I can't say that I did a whole lot with them. I've done quite a bit, but not a whole lot, because my colleagues in the area of math and science, economy or economics, anatomy, all these subjects dovetail into making them not only just graduates of school, such as Cornerstone, but qualified to go out there with a worldview and an understanding of Christian education and the superiority of it. So with that in mind, I want to thank the parents, too, for investing in your children's education. So I want to give it up to the parents here real quick. <laughs> Besides all the other things and hats that I've worn and different lessons that I've taught and maybe uh, silly names you have for me that I probably heard a little bit about now and then, and maybe you maybe perceiving that I've been somewhat of a nemesis to some of you now and then. You really know that I love you, and this school loves you. And we've journeyed together in history classes from the fall of Rome through the Dark Ages and hung out with Charlemagne, did some journeys with the Vikings, looked at some beautiful things in the Renaissance, studied the importance of the Reformation. I can go on and on, but it's just been a blessing to be able to, to continually teach what it means to understand history in this world with a Christian worldview, and I hope, guys, that you will remember that's how it needs to be understood. It needs to be understood as Christ's story. Of all the things, though, I, I hope that you guys will remember the worldview class, the worldview triangle, to be ready to give an answer to any man that asks the reason of hope within you with meekness and fear. You've endured all my silly stories, maybe, military stories, industrial and biblical parallels. I know you've endured countless reminders about the real world, some of those daddy talks sometimes that happen to come from all of us teachers who know how much the world really is no friend of Christ. So I'm believing with all my heart that you are really shored up, equipped, and ready to go into the fray, to fight the good fight, to understand that you're calling an election of God. And if you keep these things, you will never fall. It's also important, too, to think about what the Apostle Paul said to the Thessalonians in his second letter in the third chapter. Because there was a, a falling out of some believers who just were given up. They were not working. They were not contributing. And we hear a lot about this generation just kind of being indifferent, waiting for handouts, 
But you've heard the testimonies or the, the, the things that these young people want to do with their life. They're going to work hard, and they're going to represent our school well. They're going to represent Christ well. They're going to fulfill goals, but mostly follow the Lord in all that they do. And Paul said this to the Thessalonians there in chapter 3 of the second epistle to the Thessalonians. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things we have commanded you. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teachings you received from us. And as for you, brothers and sisters, never tire doing good. You get that? Never tire in doing good. Remember the bees we just talked about the other day, right? So it's with this, it's my privilege to, to have a prayer and then give you some instructions on how we're going to wrap this up. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, Lord, we, we thank you for the wonderful time we've had together this afternoon. To recognize the work of these young people and their accomplishment so that they could receive a diploma in high school and begin to first step out this door towards the rest of their life and doing things that'll make a difference, even in the smallest way they can impact their families, their friends, wherever. And Lord, I, I pray God that as they show the world what it means to be a Christian, that the values that they've learned here will be in every aspect of their lives, a parallel, and, and that the Jesus first thing and, and the Christ-centeredness of their lives will be a reflection of the gospel. God, I pray, Father, for them. Each and every one, Lord, has shown us that they do love to learn. They do love to understand things that are new and exciting to them. They probably don't like to learn everything that's been taught, but they, they have learned what they have pursued, and they, they have great dreams and goals. But may they ever be students of your word. May they ever be in love with you. May they ever find it necessary to recognize you as the Lord of their lives and the center of their lives. And, and Father God, that you would glorify you with their lives. So I pray, Father, in as much as Paul shared with the Thessalonians, we close with this exhortation and this reminder. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. May the Lord be with you all. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, ladies and gentlemen and faculty, members of the board, these students have met and exceeded the graduation requirements for the state of Ohio. Seniors, would you please stand? You may now turn your tassel from the right to the left. And now, for the moment you've been waiting for, I present to you the graduating class of 2023. Cornerstone, give it up. Whoopee! <laughs> all right. Well, I, 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 all right. Well, we got a lot more hats all over that I've ever seen before. I, I want to just give one more little bit of uh, instruction here now, and we request that everyone please remain seated until all the graduates and their parents have exited. We'll have a tunnel formed out there, but please just remain seated until we get ready to receive them all on you as well. So thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure and God bless you all.